Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. So good to have you join us. Welcome everyone to this afternoon, pre-evening gathering that we are having today as members of Franciscan Justice Circles, as members of the Franciscan family coming together to, to join in this really, really special time of year. It's one of my favorite, favorite prayers, actually, to be very honest. This, this service, the transits to remember the passing over of St. Francis of Assisi from this life to the glory of heaven. Now, this idea started a couple years ago when one of our justice circles said, you know, we were in the thick of the pandemic and, and they said, why don't we do something where it brings all of the circles together virtually for the transitus? So he said, that's a great idea. Let's do that. And here we are today continuing the tradition. So a big thank you to all of the circle members who have made this possible and really inspired it to be what it is. I invite you all just ever so briefly, if you'd like to put into the chat where you're joining us from. If you are new to Franciscan Action Network, you have a most warm, warm welcome. And I, in representation of everybody, I, I welcome you and I hope that, that you are able to find this time of prayer as, as, as really meaningful and, and uh, a little light from an extra special light from, from the spirit today. So thank you. We have people joining from La Crosse. Welcome, La Crosse, Wisconsin, Washington, D.C., Cincinnati, Ohio, St. Louis, Missouri, Omaha, Nebraska, Boston, Spokane, Washington, New Jersey, Connecticut. This is fantastic. Little Falls, Minnesota, North Carolina, California, Florida, I love it. I love that the internet can bring us together like this. This is so, so wonderful. Thank you all for being here. We're going to start the, the service in just a moment. And after the Transitus Prayer Service has ended, we will invite one of our Justice Circle members from the Boston Circle, who is also a fan board member, to offer a, a closing prayer to close out our time together. And then we will, we will be finished for the evening. So that's what will happen today. And we hope you all enjoy. And thank you to all of the people who have made this possible. God bless each of you. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Janine Walsh, and I am a communications coordinator for Franciscan Action Network. I'm also the tech, tech person behind the scenes, and I'll be sharing with you our, our service video right now. And um, we hope that we can all enter into a space of beautiful prayer in anticipation of the transitus of our uh, patron St. Francis. So welcome all of you. The transitus of St. Francis of Assisi passing over from this life to the glory of heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We adore you, Lord Christ Jesus, in all your churches and the whole world. And we bless you because by your holy cross, you are healing the world. Let us bless our Lord and God, living and true. To him, you must attribute all praise, glory, honor, blessing, and every good forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, a very ancient tradition draws us together on the eve of St. Francis feast day to celebrate this transitus, the final stage of his journey home to God. While rejoicing, in the saint's holy death, 
and the glorious entry into heaven, we give thanks to God the Father that in his Son and by his Spirit's power, we too can welcome death to our sister and trusting in his mercy can live now in the sure hope of resurrection. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord God, on this night you gave us our Holy Father Francis, the Provello of Assisi, the reward of perfect beatitude in your love. Teach us who celebrate his transitus to follow closely in his footsteps and come in our turn to worship your, you face to face in a joy that knows no ending. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. St. Francis was lying grievously ill and in pain in the bishop's house in Assisi when a doctor was called for the last time. He said to Francis, I must tell you that according to our science, your malady is incurable. And in my opinion, you will die at the end of September or the beginning of October. Raising his arms to heaven, the sick man joyfully cried out, You are welcome. Welcome, my sister death. Then turning to a friar, he asked that brothers Angelo and Leo be called to help him share this good news by singing beside his bed. In spite of their tears, the two brothers began to intone the canticle of Brother Son. All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and let us sing. Alleluia, alleluia. Bright burning sun with golden beam, pale silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him. The friars sang the canticle many times a day to comfort the saint's failing spirit, and sometimes through the night as well. Not all were pleased. Finally, Brother Elias came to Francis and said, Well, beloved father, for my part, I rejoice that you should be joyful, but I fear this city which regards you as a saint may be scandalized to see that you do not prepare yourself for death in quite another manner. The, the saint smiled and replied, Leave me, good brother, for in spite of what I endure, I feel myself so near to God that I cannot hold myself from singing. Responding to Francis's expressed desire, Brother Elias arranged for him to be carried to the Portiuncula. The magistrates of Assisi consented and sent an armed escort. When the cortege reached Santa Maria la Mura, Francis raised himself on the litter and seemed for some time to be contemplating this lovely and familiar view of the city, which he could no longer see. Then, painfully, he lifted his arm and blessed it. Be blessed of God, O holy city. On your account, many souls shall be saved. 
Many servants of God shall dwell in you, and from your midst many shall be chosen for the kingdom of life everlasting. Sparkling water, pure and clear, make music for your Lord to hear. Alleluia, alleluia. Fear sparks, O Master, full and bright, providing us both warmth and light. At the Port Siuncula, Francis was given a tiny hut in the forest near to the chapel of St. Mary of the Angels. Again, he sensed the solitude of this beautiful place so often visited by the Spirit of God. And he rejoiced as he heard from within the chapel the friars sing, This forest solitude was the ripe setting for Francis's passing over to God, for it was to be an event of radiant beauty. Francis took leave of this world with the same simplicity and courtesy that had marked all the events of his life. He forgot no one or nothing. His sons, his daughters, the places he loved, the lady of his thoughts, all the creatures with whom he had been so united shared in his farewells and benedictions. He recommended to his brothers the beloved Portiuncula. Brothers, this is a holy place. Hold it ever in veneration and never abandon it. In honor of his lady poverty, he asked that he be laid naked on the ground and covering with one hand the wound in his side, he said, I have done what is mine. May Christ teach you what is yours. begged him to forgive them for any offenses and to bless them again. This he readily did, placing his hand successively on the head of each. And then he addressed himself to his first follower, Brother Bernard of Quintavale. Be my son, I am being called by God. I forgive all my brothers, present and absent, all their faults and offenses, and I absolve them in so far as I am able. When you give them this message, bless them all for me. Nor did Francis forget Sister Claire, who he learned was weeping at the thought of losing her father and friend. He sent a message to his little spiritual plant. Tell Lady Claire to put aside all her grief and sorrow over not being able to see me now. Let her be assured that before her death, both she and her sisters will see me and because of me, they will be greatly consoled. Francis also sent a message to his friend, the Lady Jacoba of Rome, that
that she should come in haste with what is needed for his burial. Before the courier left the room, a brother ran in to announce her arrival, and Francis cried weakly. God be praised. Let the door be opened. For the rule forbidding women to enter here does not apply to Brother Jacoba. Thank you, most kind and gentle death, waiting to hush our final Child of God, where Christ our Lord the way has trod. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Roman lady had carried with her all that was needed for the saint's burial and a box of almond biscuits which Francis tried to, but could not eat, because he was so weak. More and more often, the canticle of Brother Son was heard from the hut, with the new verses Francis had composed in praise of our sister death of the body. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John in the 13th chapter. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper, took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever is bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over, so you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet also. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Let us pause for a moment of silence. At dusk on the next day, she to whom no one willingly opens the door presented herself, and Francis saw her enter. The little poor man received her courteously. Be welcome, my sister death. And he begged a brother to announce, as a herald of arms does, the solemn arrival of his expected guest, for he added, It is she who is going to introduce me to eternal life. They placed him on the ground in a coarse sackcloth to honor the somber guest, 
His head was covered with ashes and dust. Then Psalm 142 was prayed. With all my voice, I cry to the Lord. With all my voice, I entreat the Lord. I pour out my trouble before him. I tell him all my distress while my spirit faints within me. But you, O Lord, know my path. On the way, where shall I walk? They have hidden a snare to entrap me. Look at my right and see. There is no one who takes my part. I have no means of escape. No one who cares for my soul. I cry to you, O Lord. I have said, you are my refuge, all I have in the land of the living. Listen then to my cry, for I am in the depths of distress. Rescue me from all those who pursue, for they are stronger than I. Bring my soul out of this prison, and then I shall praise your name. Around me the just will assemble because of your goodness to me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. There was a great silence. Evening had already stolen into the hut. Francis lay motionless. The final stage of his transitus had begun. One of his biographers wrote, he died singing in the 44th year of his age and the 25th of his conversion. Immediately, a multitude of crested larks flocked about the roof of the hut and with their sad chirping bewailed the loss of their friend. At the same hour, a brother one of no small fame, saw a shining star born on a white cloud mounting towards heaven. The soul of the little poor man was flying to eternal happiness. I now invite our board member and the a member of the Boston Justice Circle, Maurizio Cataneo, to close us out in prayer. Sisters and brothers, this evening we have gathered in remembrance of Francis of Assisi, great awakening to the joy of eternal love and life. Though Francis' journey reached fulfillment, our journey is still on the road to completion. May God grant us a Franciscan spirit to be life-giving instruments of Christ's love in the world. May we be blessed with courage in willing service to God, the author of all creation, the source of true peace, and the proclaimer of justice for all people. May the Spirit of God inspire and empower us to exercise our voices in proclamation of the gospel. As church in union with the generations of Franciscans gone before us, may our voices announce the good news that we matter and every one of us is needed in the efforts to make God's love real. May the relationships we continue to build amongst ourselves 
and with others remind us of the oneness of God who loves, cherishes, and guides our feet on the path of life. And may God bless the ongoing efforts of the Franciscan Action Network as a reminder to us that together we can be instruments of real change. We especially ask for the Spirit's blessing on the forthcoming gathering in Washington, D.C. of the Franciscan Justice Leadership Conference. Oh God, on this day you granted the fullness of life and love to our blessed Father Francis. Mercifully grant that we, who celebrate with tender devotion the memory of his life and death, may have the joy of sharing in his eternal glory. May God bless and protect you. May God look on you with mercy. May God give you peace. In the footsteps of Christ Jesus, Francis of Assisi did what was his to do. Let us celebrate this gift and go forth in the footsteps of Francis to do what is ours. Thank you so much. Maurizio, thank all of you sisters and brothers for coming together this afternoon. Those who are on the West Coast, those who are in Mountain Time, Central Time, and Eastern Time. It's a real gift to be together in prayer. And as we remember this really special time of year and remember all that happened when our, our brother Francis left this life and went on to the next, as many of our loved ones have also done. And we hold them in our hearts and think of them as well as we reflect on this time together. I wish all of you on behalf of Franciscan Action Network staff and board a most joyous and meaningful feast day and feast week this upcoming week. May you all be blessed with much joy and peace in your hearts and in your communities. Thank you for all that you do and for who you are. Blessings to all. Good night. <laughs>